I've never been so scared. Even at the time, I remember looking at it and being offended. That thing in this world, it was it's so, it's so wrong. Life was great for George. Life was sorted. He, he was going to go off and he was going to become whatever he wanted to become. Before he got attacked by the werewolf, he, he had his fiance who was going to get married. He's got a great family, he really got on with her family. Um, and then the werewolf attack happened and suddenly it flipped his world upside down and everything, all the structure, which is really important to George, structure and normality and just wiped away completely. I just about come to terms with what had happened to me and then I saw her, my ex. And, and she had met someone else. It's such an awful thing that happens to him um, and turns him into something completely the opposite of everything he kind of consciously tries to be, which is, you know, angry and aggressive and just destroys stuff. And I think that's really... Because the, the, the George is just so lovely. I think he's got a slight neurosis. He's always had a slight neurosis. And I think he kind of, like... I'd say virgin OCD. He's angsty and he's, you know, he can be all over the place and he's scatty with things, but, you know, he's, uh, he's lovable. He's, he, there's no hidden agenda with George. He, George is as George does or whatever he says <laughs> about himself. Yeah, I think he's the sort of guy that would have, like, regular therapy. Now, remember, we're two guys renting a house. It's, it's the most natural thing in the world. We just have to be totally and completely normal. Yeah. Good luck with that. His friends end up becoming a ghost and a vampire. And for him in his head, he's like, if I'm trying to be normal, I shouldn't really be friends with these people. It's a constant struggle. But he has, he knows that he has this codependency relationship with Mitchell, because Mitchell saved him and showed him the world and accepted him and realised who he was. And George didn't have to have secrets with him. George is a loyal friend. I think that's why the relationship works so well. I mean, there's a lot of trust with Mitchell and, and George. I mean, I think Mitchell would and, and does trust him with his life and vice versa. And I think that's something quite rare, even with the best of friends. And then they move into a house and Annie and there's suddenly there's a ghost there. So for George, it's just like sod's law. It's like, of course, why, why, of course, my life, the rest of my life is completely screwed up. So of course, just throw a ghost into the mix. So who wants tea? Ooh. What? You keep making tea. Every surface is covered with mugs of tea and coffee. I go to make myself some tea and I can't. There's no mugs, there's no tea, it's all been made. And you can't even drink it. You know, you, you, you can't drink it, but you keep making it. <laughs> oh, my God! It's driving me insane! The thing with George, which is different to, to Annie and Mitchell, is that Annie is always a ghost, Mitchell's always a vampire, but George is only a werewolf one day of every month, so 12 times a year he's a werewolf. The rest of 12 days a year, for the rest of the time, he's just a normal guy. He's got no special powers, he's just this... This guy who just wants to be normal. You can't just run into some random bit of countryside to kill someone. Well, what else can I do? Come back to the house. I'm not doing this in the house. Oh, for God's sake, you can't always keep it separate. This is happening. This is part of you. George! He hates, hates, hates what he is. He completely battles against it the whole time. It's exhausting for him. He's exhausted by it. But, you know, there's something about him. Suicide is an option for George, but it's not an option that he ever really... Um, sort of courts. He never really kind of thinks about it too much because if he did, I'm sure he would do it, but there's something in George which stops him doing it. I think it's his friendships. I think it's the realisation that life is so special and that's what his kind of motto is. He just kind of lives for the day and that's what it is.